you are one of thousands of people enjoying the content produced by Christ Community Church's C3 Media. First, we want to say thank you and let you know it's our pleasure to serve you. As a nonprofit organization, we are always looking for strategic and financial partners. If you are benefiting from our content, we ask that you consider partnering with us. Even a small donation like $1 per week would go a long way. Also, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for your continued support, and we know God has a great plan for your life. But I am so excited about the word this morning that God has for you. And uh, many of you know this, but we believe as a community of faith that when we gather together, believe it or not, that Jesus is here in our midst. The very best that God had to give for us was his, was his son, Jesus. And because of Jesus, he's saved me, he's cleansed me. It's because of Jesus, this personal relationship with Jesus. And we believe when we come together that this person, Jesus, is here in our midst. of Jesus. And they have this dread that if Jesus really gets close to me, it's not going to be good for me. And I will say this is that no, it's not going to be good for the devil when Jesus gets near to you because he's going to chase the devil off. And you are going to experience peace and freedom and joy just like we had, in fact, uh, we were trying to work it out to get Pastor Travis to speak because he did last night, he did this rap and it was just amazing rap yeah. as he was just sharing and ministering and doing some stuff in the band and then the testimonies. Uh, I just want you guys to know, for those who didn't make it out last night, I think you missed it, you should have come. Uh, we had uh, videos of like Jimmy Storm was on there. I think Kenny Miller was on there. We had just different ones in our, that sharing their life story of how Jesus has changed their life. And I want you to know that as much as I love church and love all the things that go on with church, if lives are not being changed, radically changed, I mean, when Pastor Travis told you he was a hardcore drug addict living in Lewistown, and now he's been sober clean for the last 12 years and Jesus has changed his life, if he can do that for him, he can do that for you. And there's just some amazing things that God will do for you, amen? So I just wanna encourage you, when we come together, Come believe in God that he's going to do great and mighty things in your midst. Amen? So let's just jump into it. I'm talking about the anointing that's on your life, the anointing that's in you. Uh, God has anointed you for such a time as this. God has made it in such a place where that you can begin to realize that when Jesus comes to live in your life, he changes you. Jesus changes you from the inside out. And uh, there's something about Jesus and the way that he changes. Like when, when you see, and I have, to, I have to talk about Alan for just a little bit. When you saw Alan when he was a little kid, I'm just telling you, you never would have guessed he'd be doing the things that he's doing. You would never, and then, and then he got into his teenage years and you knew he wasn't going to be doing this stuff. And yet God changed him and God did some amazing things and God would do that for you. In fact, when I was praying about the service this morning, I'll just give a word of, um, maybe just a word of encouragement for some people here. I feel like the Lord gave me a word for your children, and it's in Isaiah 54, 13. Here's what it says, Isaiah 54, 13. So if you have this issue in your life, use this scripture for your word, for your family. Isaiah 54, 13 says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be their peace or their prosperity. So if you've got a worry, a concern, maybe you've got a child, grandchildren, that have been weighing you down and you're not for sure about what it is, I would encourage you to take this little rhema word from the Lord this morning, Isaiah 54, 13, and use that for your family and to say, God, thank you. All my children, all my children shall be taught by you. And great will be their peace and their prosperity. Amen? All right, so if we get into the scriptures this morning, we'll just go right through it. Let's talk about what the Bible says, anointed for such a time as this. While I'm thinking about it, just as a quick announcement, we have on the back, one of, we have a, a suggestion was made to us about having communion elements available. So anytime, any Sunday that you want to come take communion, we have a special table set up in the back 
take the communion elements, you and your family or whoever can get together, take communion, celebrate the, uh, what Jesus provided for us on the cross, his health, his healing, his, perfect, his protection. Uh, you can believe that he'll just do, as you take communion, that he'll just break you free from any attitudes, habits, thoughts. I mean, there's all kinds of wonderful things that happen that I will not go through about communion, but we encourage you to take communion. And if you want to take it on a daily basis or weekly basis, it's okay. And we as a church will probably once a month uh, do it as a corporate gathering. Amen? All right, so let's talk about this. First John 1, verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 20 says, but you have an anointing that God has put on your life. It says it this way. It says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. The word anointing there means to smear, to rub on. When you say the word Jesus Christ, the word Christ means the anointed one. The anointing that God uses to place upon your life is a special, special uh, concoction of different ingredients that would take the person from being, if you would, a lay person and turn them into a holy person. The word holy means to be set apart. So I'm here to declare to you this morning, by you being in this room, you've been set apart. God has set you apart for such a time as this. We are living in unprecedented turmoil. We're living in unprecedented times. We've never seen a pandemic that has lasted as long as this one that is going through what we're going through. We have government agencies, business agencies, and because of social media, we have so much disinformation, misinformation taking place that you need the anointing to guide you as you walk through this process. And the Bible says that because of the anointing, you will know the truth. And I'm here to encourage you that when Jesus Christ comes into your life, he is the truth. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will direct you. Talking about God separating you out, that you're no longer a part of your culture. You've made a decision to be anti-culture. And I'm not talking politics. And I'm not really talking about whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, mask or unmask. I'm talking about you have made a decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You have made a decision to let his values become your values. You've made a decision that your speech will be different from the speech of those around you. You've made a decision that your thoughts and your, and your mind and your attitudes towards life are different than those around you. Why? Because of the anointing of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one, has come into your life and he's changing the way you think, the way you speak, the way you act. There's something about Jesus when he gets a hold of a person's life that he changes you every dimension of your life. So as we go through this, and I'm going to go through it quickly, is that I want you to pay special attention to the word anoint. Because you're anointed. You have been set apart. You're no longer, if you would, just a lay person. You've been anointed by God. And we'll talk about this probably next week, about the three different types of anointings that the Bible refers to. But I can assure you that the anointing oil that they used to anoint vessels with was so special that if you were to concoct that uh, anointing oil and use it for lay purposes, listen to me, use it for lay purposes, in the nation of Israel, back in the Old Testament days, they would have the right to kill you. That's how special the anointing is. When Jesus came into your life, it's special. You're not common anymore. You're not just run of the mill. You're not just going through life just trying to exist. You've been anointed by God for such a time as this. And this anointing is so special. So let me read this to you, what they did in Isaiah 10, 27, when it talks about the anointing. Listen to this, the anointing on your life. In that day, the Lord will remove the heavy burden from your shoulders and break off the yoke of bondage from your necks because of the heavy anointing upon you. Amen. God says when the anointing comes into your life, it breaks bondages. God says when the anointing comes into your life, he breaks off the heavy yoke. If you think back in agricultural terms, an oxen or a yoke, they're pulling a plow. A lot of us have been yoked to habits and attitudes that defeat us. Things that cause us misery. Things that cause us harm and harm others. And God says because of the anointing, 
because of the anointing, I will break every yoke in your life. So I'm reading that, and I'm all excited. I'm like, yes, Lord, yes, you can break the anointing. You can break bad habits in my life. You can break these things off. You can, you can help me grow and become a better person. And you have this excitement. And the Lord just spoke to me and says, I'm also talking about physical pain. There are people, and I just, so I, so I got curious, so I looked it up, and I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He says, there are people with shoulder and neck pain, chronic shoulder, chronic neck pain, that I'm going to heal this morning in this service. I was like, okay. So I would just submit to you, this is not coming from me, but the Lord wants to release you. So if you have chronic shoulder and neck pain, if you would like to stand up and let me just pray for you, that the Lord will just heal you. We have anywhere from 30 to 70% of our adults have chronic shoulder and neck pain. And I'm saying to you, the word of God tells us in that day, listen to this, in that day, let's talk about today and today, the Lord will remove the heavy burden from our shoulders, break off the yoke of bondage from your necks because of the heavy anointing upon you. And let me just encourage you, this, this, the anointing of God, it's not me laying hands on people, the anointing is within you. Jesus lives in you. It's just releasing, it's like, it's, it's like in some ways, it's like just receiving what God's already provided for you. So wherever you have pain in your neck or shoulders, if you'll just lay hands, and those of you who are around, if you've ever seen this before, we just believe the Lord just wants to heal people, just wants to touch people. And so we want to agree with you for your spine, your back, your neck, your shoulders. If you've got any problems, I see, I see a, like a frozen shoulder thing. I just see the Lord just bringing some healing and relief to that. So just let these ones that are just standing, let's just agree with him. Father, we just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you're just doing some amazing things. Lord, I pray that you would just touch those areas. Lord, there's been chronic, chronic pain in the neck. Chronic pain. I see migraines being healed. Whoever has suffered from uh, uh, regular uh, migraines, I see the Lord healing you. But Lord, we just thank you even now for just touching each and every one. Lord, let the uh, improve in their life. Lord, that the pain that's been maybe severe, maybe moderate, maybe they're going through stiffness, maybe it's a lack of movement, maybe there's swelling. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you just release now your healing virtue. Father, let them receive it and let them a pain, the neck, the shoulders be healed in the name of Jesus. Everyone said a big amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand for that. Just trust him. He'll do it. It's just fun when you just kind of walk with it because I'm, I'm reading this all about spiritual oppression and yokes and this. And God said, no, I'm going to heal some people through I was like, okay, Lord. So if you have your Bibles, we've got just a couple more scriptures. Believe it or not, we're coming to the close of this. But in Le Leviticus chapter 8, verses 10 through 12, it says this. It says, then Moses took the anointing oil and he anointed the tabernacle and everything in it. So he consecrated them. He sprinkled some oil, some of the oil on the altar seven times, anointing the altar and all its utensils and the basin with its stand to consecrate them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. The same anointing oil that God used to anoint the priest, he anointed the vessels with, the utensils, the pots, the pans. And I want to just encourage you, there's not one job if you would, in this church, in this building, that's not important and anointed from the Lord. Amen. See, a lot of people think, well, to be a priest means that you get to be the preacher, stand on stage and preach, and it's a wonderful job, wonderful opportunity. But in God's economy, when the anointing went out, he anointed everything in that tabernacle, every vessel, and when the anointing came on it, it became holy. And I'm here to declare to you again today, I feel like someone here is going through, several people here are going through some battles. God's anointed you for such a time as this. You've been set apart for such a time as this. Let me jump into this real quick because I want to talk about being a vessel of the Lord, holy vessel of the Lord. Because there's judgment that comes when you don't handle the vessels of the Lord correctly. And I want to say this to you. We are, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, this is a great verse, it's not in our notes. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, we have this treasure, we have this earthen treasure, or we have this anointing in earthen vessels. That the power, the surpassing greatness of the power may not be of us, but from God. 
So when God shares with you his divine life, he shares with you his divine nature, he shares with you his peace, his joy, his righteousness, you've been set apart. You've been made holy. God has a call on your life. And God knows in this time and in this place, we need people who are anointed by God to do things that only God can do through them. And I'm going I'm, I'm to take just a moment on this, but you know, there are certain people God's anointed for business. I've been around business guys and there are certain guys, it's amazing the business deals that open up in the hundreds of thousands, not millions of dollars they're able to make and generate because the anointing on them for business. There's other people that have an anointing for counseling. You get with certain people and there's certain people I've just desired their advice, needed some input. You get with them and it's amazing the wisdom of God that flows through them and the understanding that throws them as they just have this anointing as they get into their counseling and they begin to speak and uh, begin to declare and they begin to have these, uh, these issues of just being able to help you dissect your problems and they just go through it. Man, it's just an incredible anointing. There's other people that just have anointings where you get with them. It's like when you've been... Uh, like physically hurt or bandaged or stuff and they just come alongside you and they just help bandage you up and take care of you. They, they just have an anointing. Most moms have that anointing called bandaging their kids. They are, they're able to take care of their kids. Dads are like, suck it up, get over it. But moms are like, no, let me help you out. They have an anointing. So my point is, is that you have an anointing. And because of the anointing, it's made you holy. When you say that I take Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one, Jesus, Jesus is my anointing. He is the, uh, coming to live in me. He has separated you for a holy life. You've become holy. But listen to this because I want to go through because there's choices you have to make. And I want to read you a story about how two different groups of people treated vessels of the Lord. In Daniel chapter 5, verses 2 through 4, there's talking about a pagan king named Belshazzar. He said he was drinking his wine. He gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. Now, how many know that when Jerusalem was overrun, taken into captivity, and one of the consequences of that is all the stuff that was in the tabernacle or in the temple got taken in to this pagan temple. The anointing was still on those vessels. Even though they're in a pagan situation. And I will say this, let me just encourage you. If you're following Jesus and you walk into situations that are not godly, it doesn't take the holiness off your life you make that situation holy. You bring the presence of God. Let me give you a little Bible verse. First John 5 says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Yes. When you walk into any situation, the anointing of God is on your life. When you walk in, and so here's these vessels that have been transported. Here's this pagan king, Belshazzar, and he decides he's going to make fun of the anointed vessels. As you read on, it goes on to say this, as they were doing this, it says, so they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God, Jerusalem. The kings, his nobles, his wives, his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they, raised to the, uh, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze and iron, wood and stone. And the very next verse says, the hand of God appeared and began to write judgment on those people. And here's my point. You have in our culture today, you have paths you can walk down. You can mistreat, ignore, abuse the anointing that God's made available to you, the believer. You can go part of your life away. You can go follow the way of our culture. You can decide that, you know what? The way I make it in our culture is how much money I can make. That's my whole goal. That's my whole life. You can decide in your culture. You can decide, you know what, it's popularity. It's trying to, how many followers I can have on Instagram or TikTok. It's all about trying to do all these things. And I'm here to declare to you that just as the king found out and all of his concubines, wives, nobles, big party, not interested in God, not going for God, when the vessels of God came into that room, things changed. When the presence of God comes into a situation, things change. You carry that presence with you 
If you've declared Jesus Christ as your Lord, Amen. you're saying the anointed one is with me. The anointed one is on me. When I walk into this room, the anointing of God is with me. That's not a pride thing. That's not an arrogant thing. It's a humility thing. Because Jesus said he came to seek, uh, to seek the lost, but he said he came to serve. He came to share. He didn't come across arrogantly as a king saying, bow down to me. He came as a servant. The anointing of God always flows richly through those who serve. Yes. Yes. And I'm here just to encourage you. Be willing to serve. Be willing to share. Be willing to let Jesus do some amazing things through your life. So judgment happened because we read uh, suddenly this hand wrote judgment and that night King Belshazzar and all of his people were destroyed by the Medes who came in and I won't go through the whole history of how Babylon was overthrown in that night. Judgment happened because they mistreated the anointing of God. And I'm here to tell you, you, want to, you do not want to be in that category. So I was reading this other verse in 1 Timothy 2, and I thought you guys would be enjoy this. It says, in a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. But some are for special purposes and some for common use. So my hope this morning in this message is that you would be, your life would be used for special purposes. My hope this morning is that you would take what I'm sharing with you and listen to Alan Scott and the testimonies and these guys are up telling you, we used to live, if you would, like King Belshazzar and all of his, and all of his group that were partying hardy and Jesus changed us and now we want to use our lives for special purposes. It says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for, look at these four things. Number one, for special purposes. Two, they'll be made holy. Three, they're useful to the master. And four, they're prepared to do any good work. There's an anointing that God brings to you. There's an anointing that God puts on your life for good works. We have discovered through the scriptures that God anoints you to destroy, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to destroy the works of hell. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> we believe that God has anointed you to destroy the works of hell. And it starts in your own life. It starts in your own life is where it starts. God does some amazing things. All of a sudden you realize, you know what? I used to like, let's say, pornography. I used to like drinking. I used to like being drugs. I used to like gambling. I used to like all this stuff. And Jesus is changing me. Why? Because the anointing has made you holy. The anointing has made you, and it sounds kind of comical to me in some ways, but I look back on my life, and I walked away from a lot of stuff that used to control me, like sports and competition and doing all this stuff where I go to prayer meetings, read my Bible, get with others, talk about the word of God, praying for one another, so excited that Jesus used us to share with someone his goodness and his grace, had such a joy when God would just use me to serve in some way. And I can just tell you that I would rather walk in that anointing than what I had previously. How about you? The Bible goes on to say in these verses that I did not include in our outline. It says that, you're, that how do you cleanse yourself? How do you make yourself, you would, more useful for the master? It says that you flee youthful, youthful lust. It says to pursue righteousness, faith, and holiness, and several other things with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And Pastor Travis talked about it earlier this morning. He talked about calling on God with those around you with a pure heart. He says, come together. So my point in sharing with these things with you is that you have a choice to make. Do you want to be a holy vessel of the Lord or do you just want to be a common clay pot? It's your choice. My hope and prayer is that you would want to be a special vessel of the Lord. That you would say, God, the anointing on my life, I have to protect the anointing. I can't let the anointing spill out because I've given my... common. It's a special day. And I'm going to go through a real quick story and we're going to close with this. It's simply this. There was a guy that was running drugs as a student in Miami, Ohio. He met a friend. He said, why don't you come with me to South Florida? We got this deal where we're just running bales of marijuana. So he said, okay. So he joined him, left school, went down to South Florida they would take a, I think it was a DC-8 plane, and they would fly into Columbia, pick up bales of marijuana, and bring it back. 
He was living the high life. I mean, he had this beautiful supermodel girlfriend from France. He had all these parties, all these babes, all this swimming pool in South Florida, living the life. Well, one day he was flying back on one of these trips and he talked about, I won't go through the story, he talked about all the things that were going on and being in Colombia and with the drug dealers. And I mean, these guys were all business. You didn't mess with them. If you, if you shorted them, if you cheated them, he talked about one time they had a guy that had cheated the cartel and uh, so they shipped him, they put him on the plane, put him in a barrel, put holes in the barrel, and halfway over the Atlantic Ocean, they kicked the barrel out of the plane. These people were ruthless. And my friend Gary was talking about these issues that he faced. And he said one day they were flying into this non-lit airport in southern Alabama, and they see all the FBI cars coming. The plane doesn't even hit the, they get through the taxi. He jumps out of the plane, goes running through the swamp. He said, Mitch, for three days and nights, I was running through the swamp, avoiding FBI search, manhunt, all this stuff. I won't go through the whole story, but anyway, they found a little piece of identification in the plane that tied him to the deal. He said, and about six months later, the FBI knocked on the door at his house in Ohio because he'd moved back to Ohio to get away from everything. And they said, you need to join us in the state of Alabama because you have done all these things with your drug running. So my friend, his name was Gary Jones, went to prison. In prison, he heard a guy named Kenneth Culp, another guy named Kenneth Hagan, share about giving your life to Christ, and he gave his life to Jesus. Gary Jones went from being a high-flying drug dealer in prison to being a servant of Jesus. He then said, Lord, he said, thank you so much that, you know, I can, so he was leading Bible studies in the prison, and I won't go through the whole story, but it's just an amazing story. God gave him a word for the superintendent of the prison, told him exactly what was going to happen if he didn't change his ways. The guy didn't change his ways. He died a horrible death. Uh, Gary had a prophetic sense about him. He felt like God called him into Bible school. He went to Rhema Bible School where he learned the word of God, learned to teach and trust and walk with God. Felt like God had called him to be a chemist and he worked for one of the leading chemical companies there in Houston, Texas. Uh, he had a job when he was working at Tulsa for $8 an hour. He moved down there. They made him the head of research and development. My friend Gary Jones that never went to college on the chemistry and he's the head of research and development for PhDs, guys from MIT and Harvard and all these Ivy League schools and he's the head of the research and development. He told me, he said, Mitch, he said, it's just the anointing. The anointing of God gives you the ability to do these things. My point in saying this is that Gary gave himself to the word of God, took the word of Jesus coming into his life, treated it as holy, gave himself to the calling. We crossed paths at a little pastor's meeting we had down in Houston, began to talk and share. And I said, Gary, would you come up and share with us some Sunday? Your testimony is amazing. So Gary Jones came up here, shared, ministered. We had several meetings with him. But I want to conclude the story with this. Gary Jones passed away a couple of years ago. But he left a legacy behind him. Because in one of his meetings we did one night in the little room, we used to be our old sanctuary back here, is that there was a lady by the name of Rose they came to the meeting and she had been raised in a denominational church, didn't know anything about healings and miracles and signs and wonders. And God used Gary Jones, the drug dealer, to bring healing on so many levels to our dear Pastor Rose's life. And she's a living witness to that of the healing that God's doing in her life because Gary Jones took the anointing that God had placed on his life in prison and kept with it as he walked with Jesus when he got out. Amen. You see, when you separate yourself from these things, God can use you to do great things. And when God uses you to do great things, as Pastor Rose, we are so grateful. that right, Rose? We're so grateful for God doing that. And now Pastor Rose is passing it on to hundreds of people everywhere she goes. She's just like on fire. I can't keep up with her because of the anointing that's on her life. So what I felt like we're going to do for the altar call, if you don't know Jesus, we want to introduce you to Jesus. But if you've, got a, if you've made a decision to serve Jesus, 
but you've got areas of compromise, things that are bothering you. That's what we're here for. The Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that destroys the oppression. It's the anointing of God that comes in and just sets you free. It's Jesus, it's Christ. As I want to read the scripture to you in Colossians 1, 27. Listen to where the anointing is. This is so powerful if you get this revelation. It says that he decided to make known to them his blessing in the nations, Colossians 1, This is the voice translation. The glorious riches of this mystery is the indwelling of the anointed in you, the very hope of glory. If Gary Jones had said no to the anointing that was on his life, I don't know that Pastor Rose would have gotten healed. If Gary had made a decision to stay in his drug-channeling ways, I don't know that we would have seen some of the things we saw because we saw signs and wonders and miracles through Pastor Gary. And the Bible tells us that the anointing is where? The anointing is in you. It's Christ of glory. I can't go with you as you go throughout your week. I can't walk in the circles of influence that you go. My hope and prayer this morning is that you'll realize I've been anointed for such a time as this. I have been anointed by God, set apart for such a time as this. And you listen, when Alan Scott sings, there's an anointing on his life. When these band guys play, there's an anointing on their life for their musical instruments. There's an anointing when Pastor Travis speaks and ministers. And I can assure you, there's an anointing on your life. God's anointed you. A holy anointing. It caused people to die if they misused it or abused it in secular ways. And the Lord's doing a separation in our culture. And I'm here to tell you as I've been praying and just working, just thinking through this, is that for some of us, and I myself is included, for some of us in this room, there's a separation that God's doing in your life. For some of you, it's your friends. And I'm not talking about even bad friends. I'm talking about other church people that treat the anointing as common. I'm telling you, some of you are in a place where the Lord's doing some things just with your values. And when you realize the anointing on your life costs God his only son, but the anointing on your life is so incredibly invaluable to God that God says that wherever you go, because I've made you holy, whatever you touch, it becomes holy. Can you imagine when Pastor Travis came in? I'll get he and Alan to come up here. When, when he walked into that drug house, and I think it was in Maine, and those guys are shooting up, it's a holy moment. Why is it, why is it, why is it a holy moment? Because the anointing on his life, when he walks into that room, changes the whole atmosphere. He treasures the anointing that's on his life. He's not out just saying, yeah, just Jesus any day. No, there's special attention that he has given to the anointing. And I felt like for the altar call this morning, if that's you, and I'm, I'm not here, I'm just telling you because you read about how they made the anointing oil and how they consecrated things. Let me just say it this way. They crushed, they crushed. When they got into it, they just, they crushed those. And you're like, wow, Jesus, there's a crushing that goes on. To walk in the anointing of God, it's like you have to be one to let God crush you. Get rid of all your old stuff. You have to pay the price. And we are living in dire times. We are living in, 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 in incredible pressures. We have people that mentally and emotionally are so fatigued they can't even see a hope or a ray of sunshine. Like this around here the last five days. But anyway, it's like can't even see. And yet God is doing some amazing things through his church. God is increasing the anointing on his people. God has given a greater clarity and a greater, so I just thought either Alan or Travis, or you, want, you guys have the anointing for the altar call, but I'd like for you guys, you guys to just stand up with us for just a moment. This is between you and God. You can be a common vessel, you can be a clay pot, or you can say, God, I've been anointed for such a time as this. You can say, God, I've been, I've been, you've set me apart. You have set me apart. The anointing on my life has set me apart to do great and mighty things for you. 
And you're going to respond to the call. And you're going to walk with the Lord and treasure, treasure the anointed one, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the healer. Christ in you, the deliverer. Christ in you, the baptizer. Christ in you, our hope, our joy. I don't worship myself. I don't think anything about it. But again, coming back to 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I know I'm just a clay pot. Without the anointing of the Lord, I can't do anything. But through the anointing, we can do great things.